Hello everyone, this is Serious Trivia. Welcome back to part 39 of our tutorial series on Total War Three Kingdoms featuring Cao Cao. We pick things back up in the summer season of 206 from turn 80. So we're seven turns out from the potential marriage with Sun Ren, and we're going to go historical after that point and launch our attack on Chibi and start our conquest of the south, assuming Lady Wu doesn't go to war with us before then. Right now, our attention is mainly in the north. We have a few small factions. Uh, Wang Quan's old faction, Han Fu, have foolishly declared war on us, and we are conquering their land with the hopes of trading them to Gong Sun Zan to work up his opinion of us. And the goal here is going to attempt an alternate strategy to annexing. We're going to try to confederate Gong Sun Zan, as we're going to give him a bunch of land and make him quite powerful, actually. Hopefully that won't backfire, but that's the plan right now. We have a few level up here. Some Ba picked up a nice level. We don't have a better armor for him. Let's see what we want. Poison Arrow on Renu. He's not ranged here in this case. Uh, although plus 5 melee evasion for the whole army isn't too bad. Increased chance of ambushing. Or we just give them all extra speed. I think we take the scare and morale and just work our way over here for patience down to Binding Fury. I think this is a pretty good stopping point. We're not really building a bandit faction, so we don't have a lot of the poison stock characters, stock and snipe characters. Uh, we do have a bunch of items. Dashu could probably pick up this bow and boost his cunning a bit more. We finally have Flaming Shot on those trebuchets. And we're going to move this army towards Anping, I guess, uh, next turn. They can't move this turn anymore. We basically resolved this fight at the end of last um, episode. Uh, we're getting one level away from picking up Poison Volley. Wonderful news. And they will scout ahead. It might be a dangerous proposition. I don't know what the army situation here is. There's no one in the city, but I don't know if that means there's no one actually here. I think the shortest way for us to reach them is actually through this plains and up into this road and bridge rather than looping this way. Forest is rather slow. And aside from that, um, I'm not going to deal with Wang Quan's faction right now. If he wants to invade us across the Yellow River, feel free. We need to swap one of our administrators over right into Nanyang. Because in the long run, the Jade Mine is much better than the Iron Mine in Runan. So there we go. We'll leave one slot open so we can do these type of swaps in the future. We're missing out on two public order per turn. Not a big deal. And as we welcome in our new administrator, we're also going to be popping in some extra buildings. Which one are we missing here? I guess Marketplace? Or we don't even have a private workshop. All right, because we still have this. Now this might end up being the 6th building anyways. Yeah, because we have pretty good faction-wide corruption reduction, so we might not need to worry too much about additional corruption reduction from administrative office per se, so I guess we'll keep it. Um, these are fine. Items on administrators also something we have to take note of. We're moving them over. Let's see level up here i think we just want to have flaming shot available in case we need generals strategists tend to need that and then our administrator so her item is very well set up for administrator duties the yeah, way is fine too we're taking the income side rather than population growth just because his resolve is ready ridiculous enough to boost Population growth. Yue Jin has the income set and the population growth from that. Weapons correct as well. Armor is correct. Horse is the best we have. Mi Zhu has nothing right now, so we're going to give him a different set. Um, I guess we can always boost population growth in Luoyang. Actually, no. We don't have many county of Luoyang just yet, so I guess 
reduction in turns would be the better option right now. And we'll give him expertise for extra discounting. Ah, Gong Sun Xu has the battle set, but we want him to pick up extra resolve. Population growth in Dong, I guess. I mean, it's better than the guard. I think we're out of... Oh, okay, we have resolve. So, that's the best we can do for him. Alright, they move into defensive position. They're still ambushed. They moved already at the start of turn. Down south, we have a problem because we don't have enough armies to take a look at everyone. So, when war does break out, we don't have enough armies. I mean, it's nice that we're right next to them, but... That's not really going to do much for us once they start taking our land. I think I'm just going to gamble that they're not going to declare war on us. Might be a foolish gamble, but that's our option right now. Alright, we can get the level 4. And instead we'll focus on developing our commandery some more. And enjoy these peaceful times before we jump back into the final war to end it all because that's pretty much what's going to happen next okay so in probably be best right now this is a really awkward build but like honestly we shouldn't go for income but then again we have so much food All right, we're just gonna go pretty greedy here. Maybe we'll throw an administrator. You can still get more administrators um, from the reform tree. I think you can get one more. Okay. Oh, this is interesting. So we would like tea, but we would also like to use this last slot. I guess State Workshop is the missing puzzle here. And this is where we should spend some money to rush things, because I do want to downgrade this pretty quickly. Hmm. Let's see what else needs to be built before we make that decision in Don't Light. There is an administrator, but... There's not enough adjacent commanderies here, so we'll go with that first in the future if we can bring it down. Alright, Pingyuan, we don't need to build anything here. We don't need to touch this. We just got this, we're going to trade it away, so leave it alone. Lujiang need to pick up uh, Luling, never mind, not Lujiang. Luling's uh, copper mine needs to be upgraded. Poyang's copper mine needs to be upgraded. And then we have 5,000 left. Which I guess we will be rushing buildings here then. We want this to reach tier 5, so I guess we'll spend some money next turn, and then we can start downgrading afterward. Alright, so that's it. Uh, with buildings, we are going to look at the um, spying. I think we're saving up points to get rid of the air. We're missing a few more points. Just one more turn, I think would be sufficient or maybe two more turns we could give up oh I forgot if he has any defense on the under network but I don't think he does um, over here we're also working on the air and we're just waiting for the very standard discredit character now we could risk it where we make her fail the mission so that she gets executed and then we also get to push the air out. Because he's at 28. You see we're missing points here, but I don't want to wait. So we just commit to it. And we get killed afterward because the spy will be discovered. But then what's happening here is that we're getting Yuan Shu's wife to take care of their son. And then have the wife be discovered, so Yuan Shu kills his own wife after chasing out his own son. In, in my book, it's a win. 
that this credit goes through. And we should see a large number of characters from his faction that might want to join us because now they lose an heir. For our spies with Luo Jun, they spent a lot of points during the last few turns. So I think we'll just have them chill for a little bit. They're both in the same army. And there's really no one we want to work on at all. I think we're pretty happy with the espionage. Uh, we committed the suicide move uh, for Yuan Shu here. Poor guy. Uh, but not going to feel sorry for him. We have a ton of points uh, from credibility. Uh, we've been wasting points away for a little bit. And what we should do at this point in the game is no longer go for proxy wars because it's just impossible. So even if we find a faction that like us, so for example, Liu Biao, and we incite a proxy war against a faction that he's going to dislike or and potentially is considered weak, who might that be? Hmm. Let's pick one of the Naman tribes. You see that even in this case, it's very hard for us to push it through. And it doesn't actually benefit us for him to set up that war. So at this point, what I'm going to do with my points is I'm going to invest it on Gong Sun Zan. As the plan going forward is us confederating them. And hopefully grabbing Zhao Yun. Uh, who should not hate us because we haven't done anything bad against them. So the first step of this plan is to spend our points. We're going to manipulate his relationship in a positive manner with us. And that's just a simple declaration. We get 19 points. The goal is to raise him over 150-ish. And then we can see what that's going to do to confederating. So in the future, we're going to do this move where we liberate and then we confederate instead of waiting for the annex cooldown. But right now, we're going to invest all our manipulate point into him. You can do it multiple times per turn and plus 20 this time. Now, the increase here, something that you should make note of, is an increase to the trend. So the current amount will go up, but the total that you see is the trending total. So it's not there yet, but it's going to slowly increase to that point over the next few turns. Regardless, we're going to dump all our points into him. So that's not it. We're not done with him. He's now 59, trending towards 95. We're going to be still giving him land in Pingyuan. 25 points is too much because we're not getting extra for the extra 10.8 here. So we are going to ask for some stuff back. I guess in the money. Wait, why can't I ask for a per turn? There we go. Oh, he's quite poor. Oh, he is very poor. Huh. That is not a good sign. Let's wait off on this. I'm going to conquer another piece. And then we're going to do it in little pieces later. Is there potential to make him like us? Because this is also a plan we can do with him. He has a weapon. Alright, we're going to hold off on the land giving part. We have almost no money now. And we're going to gain a lot of credibility back. Seven points a turn. So it means in three turns we can do it again. And we're just going to try to nurse this relationship. I guess we can do it in other ways. I say he needs food. I can try to get five points here. That's a 15 pointer. Oh, that's a point. That's an interesting jump. All oh, right, because it's jumping by two here. That's what we want. 18. 10 points. It's still 15. We got to find five more points. So if I make a regular payment to him. Let's 
see the same 49 we just need it to be a 15 exact so 900 per turn let's do it i think we'll be able to confederate him before this is 10 turns up so it shouldn't hurt us and we're at trending towards 145 let's see how this goes turn over turn we'll also lose some of this every turn and the spy action being exposed obviously doesn't help but it should be gone within five turns and we should be able to get the annex off so i think we're ready let's just continue hopefully lady wu doesn't change her mind on the war situation all right nothing really changed spy is dead how is she returning all right ying shao is the faction that guan yu is in Ooh, hua xun picked up honest but he's not in the leadership group so he's not going to give that five percent corruption reduction over we're not at war with Zhang Yang. We want to take Anping. Hong Sun Zhan is going there himself. Ooh, that's not good. He's going to get there before we are. We can't reach. I mean, we can come over here. But then again, you never know with AI movements. Oh, Liu Zhang's here. Interesting. Now that's someone who we might want, although he declared war on us randomly and then died. Alright, we're still not at war with any major factions, which is a relief and a little bit of boredom. Let's see how their armies are moving. They moved down. Quorum Poly disappeared over here. They're still recruiting. Nothing happening over here. Okay. So we'll still spend our income on development at this point. Plenty of places that need to be built up. And we will be taking this first. Wangling is fine. Yeah, we'll plant some food here. Okay. Don't like. All right. How much do we have? We have 10k. All right. We'll come back to this. This is the potential rush. And I don't know what to do with Ping Yuan. I'm gonna keep it for now, but I think I'm gonna trade it away. All right. So we don't have to build anything else. So we are gonna rush this. Boom. And we do want this to be built too. So this, I think, also requires a small regional city, which we have right now. So I guess we have to wait one more turn. We're at 400. We can't build anything this turn. All right, let's see. He's getting points back again. Uh, she's back to 35. Okay, we're going to have to just stash a lot of points so we can do both actions in the same turn. Yeah, there's no one to really perform anything. I think for them, it's just saving enough points so that when we need them to betray their own armies, they'll do so. So we'll just balance their point growth. No turncoats on the table. Okay, that makes things a little easier. Let's go back and check how the diplomacy is developing over here. So the trending maximum is dropping because some of the manipulation points are going to drop every turn. But we did jump from 59 to 78, and we're still trending up, which is good. Uh, some of the negative factors also drop. I think we are going to give him the territory. <laughs> what if we ask for the salt mine back? Mm, that's kind of silly, actually. All right. Most of that is our payment. We're paying him 900 per turn. He's going to have to give some of that back to us. Let's do 415. Uh, no, 415 or 420. Like nice numbers here. 410. Okay. Looks good to us. 
and now he's trending towards 186 currently at 105 we could try to liberate him soon and um, then we'll try to grab him afterward we can probably wait for two more turns wait for some of our annex points to come down also wait for the credibility to do it one more time before we do it and then we liberate then we try to confederate uh, we might have to push a narrative where we issue an ultimatum a little risky but i think we can do it uh, i don't think we need to do that anymore oh there is corruption here never mind we do need to do that and then we could boost commerce here as well but fa is needed elsewhere Right, eventually he's inheriting one of the guys who's going to die on the field for being old age. Let's see. They're getting their necessary boost. We have 600 here. 370 commerce. That's pretty high, actually. Five fifty industry, six hundred industry, but they're getting boosted here. Nyan has a mix that's a little weird. I guess we just throw her in Dayan as well. Doesn't matter if she likes it or not, because the only reason why she is in our faction is to perform such assignment task. Oh, but she's 35. But she's not going to die and give us this. We can... Mm, she also has resiliency. We'll have to kill her twice on the battlefield. Oh, and we also use her to grab Shirsin for us. I guess she could go on the battlefield soon. Shirsin is here. They can go out together in the same army. Uh, we need strategists, it seems. Let's see. Oh, we're out of money. Oh, we could recruit Yang Xiu or Sima Fang for story purposes. And then assign them. We can always cancel something that we don't need right away. We can build something cheaper for this turn. So we can recruit a character. Uh, somebody's dad's old. Let's go with Yang Xiu. And Yang Xiu can jump over here to do assignment for us. Perfect. There we go. Now I think we have everything. Um, quick check of quick deals, just to see how everyone's opinion has been changing. High Empire wants to be our vast. I think we can get a confederation from them if we tried. But I don't really want the High Empire, so no. Uh, they probably do have a lot of interesting characters, but most of them won't join us, so it's not like we're losing out there. Let's just continue and see what happens over here. Ah, there we come. So... Lady Wu has declared war on us. It has happened. I mean, it was it was negative 200 something. All right, we have, let's see, five turns to beat them down, get a peace deal, try to get the marriage pushed through. Time to go to war. And of course, right off the bat, we're getting attacked. Um, this is the fishing port, I believe. So, let's see. We don't have any generals here. I could try to loop them probably could get a very exploitive win, but let's just let them take it. We'll suffer the consequences and try to fight them properly. And Kong Rong is also sieging a mine. Now, I don't think the mine defense is as cheesy. Um, they obviously have a really strong force, but you notice here they have no cavalry. So we're just going to utilize our cavalry to beat them here, which I feel like it's fine. I also don't want to lose a copper mine, so we're fighting this one. Alrighty, so we're here in a copper mine. Um, now obviously we can loop them behind the mine, that's probably a very viable strategy. They have fire, um, they have siege weapon that had breathe fire I believe in this army. Um, so that tactic is not going to, we're not going to really utilize the towers to do much, but I think if we can keep them away from the building with our cavalry. Now obviously the infantry has to get out somehow. I think running this way probably is the best idea. There's only one range unit here. It's the Defender of Earth too. Wow. So yeah, now we're fighting other Emperor armies. They have Emperor units as well. So it's going to be tougher and tougher as we move on. This is the core of our strategy here. 
let's see if this works with advanced enemies. So they're gonna be surviving. So they're they're gonna go run to the back. And then they are gonna go out there and attract some enemies. See what they do. We'll get shot. I don't want to get shot. Run away. And we'll come back. They just gotta buy some time. So I didn't notice any fire arrows just yet. We're fighting against Protector of Heavens, Jamatian Infantry, Defender of Earth, which has bomb arrows, which can blow up towers as well. Yeah, I don't know if we can actually win this, but I wanted to give it a shot. Because their weakness is pretty apparent. They have no cavalry whatsoever. So technically, I think I can guarantee a draw if I just move my units to the back here. Like, how are they ever going to catch us? Uh, meanwhile, I do want to deal damage to them. But even if we do get a draw here, we still have to beat them in future turns. And the idea here is just to hide, let them chase, and then we'll pick up against some stranglers. Because during this whole time, they're getting shot. And they are chasing pretty hard. Okay. So we don't want them just to plain old chase that group. I want to pop into vision now. So they are willing to turn around. And if we could catch these guys, that would be the dream. But they haven't been falling behind too much. Like it's not like they're trailing by a lot so that we can pick them off. But Coral is definitely here. We can kill the Scholar here. And see if they will react when we fight him. I think he's just hiding in here. Find him. Find the enemy general. There he is. If I click him, will they turn around? Hold on, hold on. I don't want to get fire breathe on us. Wait, they're just... Are they just going to keep moving forward? No one's going to turn around? Uh, okay. We got enemy archer's attention. I mean, right now all these troops are kind of like invisible now. They're behind the mountain. Like, they can't see them. They can clearly see this group. Yet they're not turning around to chase us. Zhang Feng, Chen Hu. Okay, Zhang Feng has an armor, silver one. All right, they're coming back. Good. I don't want them to go in. Yeah, this might be too easy. But they're not using any of the fire applications on the towers, so this is just free hitting. And since they have absolutely no cavalry... Oh, I lied! They have one! A mercenary cavalry group. Okay. We don't want to get chased by them. Alright, we're gonna loop them... This way, I guess. That must be a saber cab with heavier armor, thus a lot slower speed. All right, then we run back over here. So they would come back into range. Hmm, we're gonna get shot if we go that way, actually. We lost one man so far. They're about to lose their siege weapon. Okay, 
Like they're lining up before they charge us. It's hilarious. Alright, so this time we're running closer to their cavalry, which might be a little dangerous. But I think if we just break away pretty fast, they wouldn't break off to chase us. Having this one real slow unit is actually pretty dangerous. Oh, getting shot. Notice how the slow unit's one getting shot, even though you quote unquote have better armor. See, now they're burning some of them, which might actually end up burning some of their own troops, because they do have bomb arrows. All right, we're going to get shot and run across. It's okay. It's okay. Take the damage. Oh, bomb arrows really hurt. And it causes suppression, which slows you down even more. All right, I want them to get killed by the enemy or our, our towers. All right, they're lined up again. Rinse and repeat, I guess. Alright, we got the first routing enemy. Oh, they got some people. Are they charging the gates? No, I guess not. You guys want to light up the forest? I wouldn't mind taking a couple of bomb arrows. Who routed? Got yet? Okay. Yeah, they have way too low armor and stats or how heavily armored they look. Yeah, come through the burning forest, please. No! No, it stopped burning. Okay, we'll, we'll stand here. Shoot us. There we go. Burnt, burnt, catch fire, catch fire. No? All right, we took damage for no reason. And let's go back here. Yeah, they're never going to take the copper mine away from us. Not when we have cavalry garrisons. They split their force. That's new. What's the idea here? Man, you're really getting shot up. Right, their cavalry is gone. Their general is about to die. Yep. So slow. They're gonna route that unit. Right, why don't you lead them back? Uh, can't even do that. Okay. We're not gonna beat them. There's not enough time. Because lucky for them, 40 minutes is all they have to fight us. But I think we'll be able to take out a few more units. Their general should be pretty injured. The one that got taken out was level 4, so there's definitely resiliency on him. Therefore, he's not gonna get actually killed. He'll be wounded, he'll bounce back. Okay, now we're just sacrificing these guys. I just want them to stay here a long time. Honestly, we can do it with. Mm, we could do it with one unit. But then we run the risk of just losing enough morale by being isolated. Alright, play loot them maybe one more time or two more times. 
probably try to maximize the damage this time. Get them to stay under the fire a little bit longer. So much for an elite army. We can even pull them a little bit closer this way because this tower still do damage all the way up to here. Light it up, light it up. No. Oh, Trempo is rushing out. Okay, hold on. Might need to micro this. He might actually kill us. I mean, that's why we have our uh, sword inf infantry on the back to make sure they don't actually die. Alright, we're good. They burned themselves. We did it. We did it. They're burning themselves. Alright, now they get to shoot themselves for two more minutes. Or get ooh, move, 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 move. Or get shot for two more minutes. Ah, uh, it's a shame. If we had another five minutes, I think we wipe them out and we win instead of get the draw. But this is it for us. Time to get out of here. Alright. Alrighty, so we got ourselves the draw. Um, they lost over a thousand men. We lost some. We got them into the Defender of Earth bomb arrow fire. Uh, we'll take a lot of money here. And we're getting attacked right outside of Xingdu. We have our army standing here on standby, hoping to catch them off guard, but instead they're gonna dump their administrator force plus the local city garrison plus one army and I guess these are not exactly full armies maybe one and a half plus the half so bully two on one um, a little bit more than that 3,500 versus us we'll take this fight we'll have an honorable fight here and hopefully we can damage them enough to make the subsequent fight a lot easier so let's start all right it's raining which is not good um, what is good is they're coming from one direction, including the reinforcement. So we don't have to worry about any flanks. We are very open. Okay. So in this case where we have a formation, we're going to use a slightly different battle tactic from what we done in the past. So we often relied on our trebuchets to thin out the enemy, which we will still do. But because we have a trebuchet position here in the front, what the enemy will do is they will charge us, which we already talked about many, many times. Um, but the other advantage of this, uh, we do have good flanking units, so I can put them pretty much right here. And then we'll have them kind of protect the flanks. Right, the main difference here is we now have some ranged cavalry unit. So these guys are gonna like counter flank a bit later. So we're gonna put them off to the side. I might even have them just sit up here pretty, absorbing enemy arrow damage. And that's kind of their job. Put them on loose, let them take all the arrow hits. And these guys are gonna be the ones we micro. Oh, why did I put them as? So these should be four. If we can get a duel off, I think we want to. So Sahodun will move up, Cao Cao will stay behind, Guozia will stay even farther behind, and I think that's the plan. And we want these boys to be close together because we get this Imperial Solidarity buff. If they're within 50 meters of each other, they'll get some extra melee evasion, morale, and armor piercing damage. Melee damage? Um, not that relevant, but we'll take it. And the idea here is we want to run these guys who are decently fast. They're not the fastest unit in the game because we have them recruited on... Tal Talma has mobility, I think. So 75 is... Oh, 84. Never mind. 75 is their ammo count. So 84 is decently fast. 
And what they're going to do is they're going to run around enemy formations on the side and just peel units off from the formation. And this way, as they come, we take away individual groups. We wipe them out with the crossbow fire. Very powerful crossbow fire, by the way. Uh, anyone willing to duel? Nobody. That can be changed. Their minds can be changed if we start pounding them pretty hard. They're going to group up first. They have a lot of men. They have a lot of cavalry as well. That can chase us down. But I think if we just stand there and shred them, these are double sized cavalry units, so usually they're 30, these are 60. Um, so we have like 120 troops here. So if anyone wants to come close, if it's only one or two units, we can probably shred them before they even get to us. Because for uh, crossbow units, firing rate is ridiculously high. By comparison, regular crossbow is like 5 firing rate, these are 38. Even our onyx dragons only have 15. So, not even close. They might not charge up because they can't see our trebuchets. Is that the case? Alright, then more reason for us to utilize these troops. And Sat Holden as well. Can't believe no one wants to duel us. By the way, they're the attackers. We're defenders. The clock is in our favor this time. Again. Peel off a unit to come test us. They see us. You guys attacked us. What is this? They have more units than can fit on the map, so they have reinforcement that's behind. My range only goes this far. I'm not moving it up. Like, we could push it to the tree line, but in this weather, there's no reason. Alright, they're coming, they're coming, they're coming. Okay. Come on, guys. Don't be scared. We don't bite. Oh, uh, they sent a crossbow unit? Well, that is ridiculous. I mean, we would have the same range. Oh, they sent a repeating crossbow. That's even more ridiculous. Come on, come out. We'll duel. So look at their firing rate. Look at their range. 120. What are they doing? Come on, I'm here. They can't fire on generals, they're coming for our cavalry. Let's go shred them. Imperial units! Fire! They're pulling back. Not as high damage as I want. I mean, the trees help. I think it's minus 25% yeah, extra melee evasion or resistance, range resistance. So they have higher survivability here. Yeah, maybe if I keep hurting them this way, they'll see this. Oh, they see them. They see them. Okay, they're moving. All right, we did our job. We got them to move towards our main formation. Right, we're going to pull back a little bit. The job of your range cavalry is to peel off one or two unit from the enemy formation and not to actually engage the enemy army. Uh, not coming. I right, stop. We're not we're not chasing. If we could pick one off, we do it. If we can't, we don't chase. Let's test our theory of us destroying 
shot cavalry before they even charge us. I think the other two are actually chasing Zahodun. Uh, didn't work out, but it's okay. They died right after. You know what? Look at your charge damage. Look at our charge damage. Look at our attack rate. Look at our evasion rate. Look at our armor rate. You really want to fight us? Yep, they're sent to kill Sahodun. That's devious here. No, do not fire. Do not fire. Do not waste ammo on these guys. Yeah, we'll fight them off. We're just stronger. Onyx dragons can shred them. We're not going to waste any of the tribuchet ammo on them. Alright, not really microing those guys. Time to micro these guys. Hello, how are you doing? We're actually losing plenty of men in those Imperial Cavalry units. But we should be able to do well against their cavalry. In sustained fights, we have the advantage of the attack speed, damage, evasion, everything. Alright, back to what we actually care about here. No one wants to take a duel, huh? Right, change our angle. Mm, that's not a good sign. Can we pull them out? Might take a lot of damage, but I think we do it. <sighs> Who do I want to kill? I want to kill... Mercenary Archers? No, I want to kill Defender of Earth. We don't want to get hit by bomb arrows. Or even if we want to get hit by bomb arrows, I want them to get hit by bomb arrows. Where else do we have Defender of Earth? There's one here. Is that the only one? That's the only one we just try to kill that. Alright, we'll just pull them back. They'll take damage, but it's fine. Here comes some cavalry. There's some cavalry on that side as well, so we can't really leave. Destroy this guy, please. Alright, we're about to get charged. Pull your formation together. Break through. Auto fire, please. Activate them. Now you guys charge, it's fine. No takers. We'll take care of that group. Right, let's clear this out. She will reset. They both ran to them, which stopped the momentum on that charge. They can win over here. Still no takers. Yeah, they're wrecking our tribuchet from behind. So I'll go take care of that as well. Blank it out. Clean that up. Uh, 
Ah, uh, the protector of heaven still chasing. Keep moving. Kill the cavalry. It's okay, our front line's gonna hold. I'm not even gonna worry about that. The quality of our front line is just too high. There's too many things to micro. Where's our other cavalry? We send it out. We call another guy. Generals are leaving. Front line engage melee versus melee. Switch angles. They're fine. Alright. Prefer if we get them to charge. Hmm. They overchased. Just hold. That is not a good sign. Here. You shouldn't have been pulled back. That's user error. Oh, come on. Where did they come from? Let's kill some generals. Costly battle for sure. They have more men coming too. From the back. They have the garrison men as well. Alright, so I'll knock out one. We killed all the other cavalry, right? We just pull away from this infantry. Oh, this is a bloody fight. Try to knock out other generals. Jiang Qin over there. Alright, shoot them from the back. Actually, no, you guys are arranged. Just join in from the shooting from the back. Come on, Sal, didn't take care of that. Tal Tal's gonna solo these guys. That guy we just ignore. Fire, fire, fire. Fire, fire, fire. Why are they charging in? Them too. No idea. They did it. They're back. 
He's back. Guard their flank. Whoa, whoa. Who's shooting us? Okay, mercenary archers. Alright, they got it. They came on. New reinforcements are coming. Turtle. Fire. There we go. Oh, they threw traps on the ground. Okay. They're gonna kill a few of us. That's fine. Two way to avoid that. What's well, that's also knocked out? Yeah, Emperor troops, Defender of Heaven, very, very strong. Alright, I finally got them. Okay, set them up over here. So this group is going to be a little bit difficult to kill. Range resistance. Our cavalry is all spent. Are they going to charge us? Because if so... Actually, no. No, 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 no. We can shoot them. They turned around. We'll hunt the generals down. Try to take the morale out that way. Those garrisons doesn't really matter. Alright, they're also out of ammo. Alright, alright, we're good, we're good. Don't need to chase. You guys in the front. Try to make sure they turn white first. Kill. Kill. I don't want them to shoot us. Better if we could charge into them, get them to start running. We still have plenty of ammo, just not a lot of men left, so we're not actually going to do a lot of damage. Alright, get them down too. Alright, the spear guards. Shaholdun, go back, go back, go back to that one. Oh, they send the cavalry back. Wait, I thought. Hmm. I thought they got wiped already. Where did they come from? You boys, man up. Flank with our infantry. <laughs> Onyx Dragon has to join the fight now. They're okay in melee, especially compared to like the infantry. Well, why did we charge that? All right, we won. Not a pretty victory. And what we want to do here is actually try to kill as many as we can. 
so let's turn on the sword. Oh, they ran out of ammo, that's why they charged. Okay, they charged them, they charged them. Also, I actually can take care of that one. Stay on that. The main thing is the garrison army needs to die. This was a rough fight. I think we need to like re-recruit some of our units, given how the state things are. Um, like if the Imperial units wiped, the replenishment's really slow, so we might as well re-recruit, get the mustering bonus. They don't lose any levels because they join you at level 10, so they're max ranked already. Uh, we're gonna let one group run away. Yeah, hold on, maybe come over. How many is over here? Eight archers. Okay, switch. Keep chasing, don't give up. Yeah, everyone's exhausted at this point. I think we can switch target. Yep. Come over here. 77. Come on, Sal, we'll do it. Sal's already finished killing. We don't need to chase these. These are wiped. Wait, why did they stop chasing? Oh, they had they had some arrows as well. No no no. Chase with your swords. Alrighty. Alrighty, so we made it out of that fight live, but not well. We lost over a thousand men. Uh, they lost a lot too, but they have more remaining. And let's see what the result of the capture is. Oh, we got a gold armor. We caught Lu Fan. Uh, I do want to recruit him. He has a very nice background of boosting silk and spice income. I think we'll just release. I think we might actually just release everyone. Yeah, no one wants to work for that. Jiang Qing is also a very interesting general too. Not in game, but in history. Um, we'll take the replenishment at this point. Every little bit helps. Alright, so our disillusional belief that Lady Wu will not declare war on us backfired. And now we have to take care of the aftermath. Yan Bai Hu is willing to join us, that's a great sign. Uh, let me snatch him real quick. This is all thanks to the fact that we didn't destroy his faction. We we let um, Lady Wu do it for us. And the payoff is right here where we get him and we can use him to fight back against Lady Wu's army. So we definitely want to capture this. Um, the garrison is as weak as it's going to be, so we want to just wipe this out now. We still have our tribuches, it's damaged, but it's there. I think we just want to delegate this fight though. I don't think we actually want to fight it. Assuming we win the delegate, yes we do, okay. We'll still lose a lot of men, probably a few more units get wiped out. Well, luckily no one got wiped. And now we can replenish, which is the big deal. And then this army is going to go back over here to protect our capital mainly. That's the main job. I was not a big fan of their performance, to be honest. Um, in theory, you want to peel off a couple of less mobile enemies, like the infantry, and then you wipe them out. But they charge us with about three different cavalry, and that was a little bit overwhelming. And then we had to micro this side and this side. Now we'll let these bounce back, but I think we might swap them back towards Tiger and Leopard. Which I think is just going to be better for us at this point. Because they ran out of units in that fight. I'm going to give them another chance. One more chance. Alright. One more chance. 
So they still have this army on the run. And they can't replenish anymore, so I'm not going to worry too much about that. And we're going to use this as our save point. This is still happening over here. I don't know where they're going to go. Hopefully not hop into the river to the north because we have no one here. We're going to have to spend money to pump this army out, attack Troop B. And then in the north, things are pretty peaceful. Um, feels like Yuan Shao has things under control. He actually managed to expand a little bit. And we don't have to fight here either. So we might recall everyone. We're going to try to give more land or not we don't have one more land we can give one more to him and then use our credibility next turn because we get 25 points and then we liberate then we try to confederate that's the goal here in the north in the south we have five turns to beat them down we have armies ready for invading towards their capital we're going to start sweeping down and the goal is to force them into a peace deal within five turns that includes a marriage so that's going to be the goal. And I think basically just wipe out whatever army we see on the field. One, two, three. And then take maybe one, two pieces of land. Because moving around this territory takes a long time as well. So we're not going to get that much done. We'll take two pieces here. We'll beat them all back. Recapture everything. I want to take Poyang as well. Uh, maybe that can be part of the deal for the piece. But that's our goal. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this one. And we'll see you all next time. Bye.